Hi, I'm Yvan and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where I can share with you my passion for RVing and my love for recreating regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my RV kitchen. Today I'm going to take you to a breathtaking historic estate and I'm going to show you how to make some sweet crepes for you and your sweetie. Now before we tour this breathtaking estate, let's go ahead and start the crepe batter. It needs to sit in the refrigerator for just a little bit. So first we'll make our crepe batter, then we'll talk about the estate, and then we'll get cooking. So in order to make our crepes, we need the following ingredients. We need some flour. Now I like to make buckwheat crepes, so I've got some organic buckwheat flour. I'm also going to use a little bit of all-purpose flour. If you don't have buckwheat flour and you can't find it, that's okay. Just use the regular flour that works just as well. I've got a cup of flour in here right now, half a cup and half a cup. To that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of sugar right to the mix, as well as a pinch of kosher salt, just like that. Using my whisk, I'm going to mix the dry ingredients together. Once they're combined, I'm going to create a well in the center of my dry ingredients. To our dry ingredients, we're going to add two tablespoons of melted butter right into the center of that well. We're going to add one cup of milk. You can use whole milk or skim milk, whatever you have on hand. And we're going to add three large eggs. With our whisk, we're going to mix this well until all the ingredients are combined. We're going to put this in the refrigerator. It needs to be refrigerated for at least one hour, and you can even refrigerate it overnight if that's easier for you. At once, a generous host, yet a demanding taskmaster, a married man who openly lived with his Hollywood lover, a publisher, a politician, and an avid art collector, William Randolph Hearst spent some of the happiest days of his life at Hearst Castle. Camp Hill is what the family affectionately called the thousands and thousands of acres of ranch land that overlooked the sparkling Pacific Ocean. They enjoyed camping excursions frequently, though they roughed it. In fact, the way they roughed it was in a canvas tent compound, complete with staff to serve their every need. When Hearst's mother passed away, she left him all of the land and approximately $11 million, which allowed him to pursue his dream. He contacted San Francisco architect Julia Morgan, who worked with his mother on several projects, and said, Miss Morgan, we're tired of camping out in the open. I think I'd like to build a little something. That little something turned into La Cuesta Encantada, the enchanted hill, and what we know today as Hearst Castle. It's almost 91,000 square feet, and there are three wonderful guest houses, the main house, which is called Casa Grande, the Roman pool, and the show-stopping Neptune pool, which, by the way, I understand if you happen to work at Hearst Castle as a guide, once a year they have a party for all of the staff, and you can actually swim in the Neptune pool. That's almost enough to go get a job there. In the 1920s and 30s, Hearst Castle was a gathering place for Hollywood's elite. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't be surprising to see Clark Gable, Carol Lombard, Joan Crawford, Errol Flynn, even Howard Hughes. Now, Mr. Hearst didn't like laziness, and he encouraged his guests to wake up every morning and take advantage of all the wholesome opportunities that his ranch offered. From horseback riding to picnicking to swimming to playing tennis, there was a lot to do at Hearst Castle. By the afternoon, guests could come back to their room, relax, and prepare for the evening's festivities. They would all meet in one of the salons that surrounded the dining hall and visit and enjoy one another's company. When dinner was served, guests filed into the dining hall, and those folks that had most recently arrived at Hearst Castle would sit closest to Mr. Hearst. As the week went on, their seats got further and further from their host, and when they got to the end of the table, they knew their time at Hearst Castle, at least this time, was up. In 1947, Mr. Hearst and his lover, Marion Davies, left Hearst Castle for the very last time due to health concerns. Hearst Castle was, and still is, in a fairly remote location. 
In 1951, Mr. Hearst passed away, and in 1957, Hearst Castle was given to the state of California for all of our enjoyment. Now, there isn't any camping at Hearst Castle, and they haven't caught onto the work camper thing yet, but just up the road is San Simeon State Park. Imagine yourself in your own humble abode overlooking the seashore and preparing some fabulous crepes for you and your sweetie. It's been about an hour. Our crepe batter's ready. Let me show you how we're gonna make these crepes. I think you're gonna love them because I know they are delicious. Now, when you refrigerate the batter, chances are it's going to get a little bit thick and that's okay, that's normal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at it. As you can see, it's thickened. We want it about the consistency of heavy cream. So I've got a little extra milk here. Just gonna pour a little bit of milk in. I'm gonna stir it around, loosen it up a bit. Making crepes is actually an easy process. We've made the batter, now we're gonna cook the crepes. And there's lots of tips and tricks. I'll tell you that when I butter my pan, and by the way, I've got a 12 inch non-stick saute pan, and I've got this on medium heat. I'm gonna use a stick of butter. I'm not gonna use all the butter, but I've got this stick of butter. I've just taken it out of the freezer, and I'm gonna use this just easy to hold on to. And I'm going to take the butter, I'm gonna go all around the pan, including around the sides, just like that. For the batter, I'm going to use my quarter cup measure, and crepes call for a scant quarter cup. That means almost, but not quite, a quarter cup of batter. So I've got my batter in my measuring cup. I'm gonna bring my pan over, and as I pour the batter into the hot buttered pan, I'm going to rotate it around. My goal is to get the very thinnest possible batter on my pan. So once I think I've got that just about as good as it can be, and believe me, they're not always perfect, I'm gonna set it down on the heat. I'm gonna let this cook for about a minute. The edges are gonna get a little brown and crispy, and I'm going to be able to move my saute pan and my crepe is gonna shake back and forth. So in a minute, I'll show you how that works. Well, it looks like this crepe is just about ready to flip. So I'm gonna use my silicone spatula. I'm going to go underneath the crepe, and along with my fingers, I'm just gonna flip this baby right over into the pan, just like this. Again, I'm gonna let it cook for about a minute or so until it's nice and crisp, and we're gonna transfer it over to a plate. Then we're gonna get ready to put the filling in the crepes. You can fill your crepes with any kind of sweet delight you like. Today, I'm gonna to make a trio of crepes. I'm going to make crepes with some delicious lemon curd. I'm also gonna make a crepe with some Nutella, which is a chocolate hazelnut spread. And by the way, this is a classic crepe filling. And I'm gonna make one with a fruit spread. This is black cherry. And I'm gonna put a couple teaspoons of jam right on my crepe. I'm gonna use the back of the spoon and I'm just gonna spread it around. Don't worry that it's a little bit lumpy because the next step is gonna to be to put this in the oven and everything is gonna get nice and ooey gooey. Set my spoon aside. I'm gonna fold my crepe into quarters. I'm gonna fold it in half first. Then I'm gonna fold it in half again. It's gonna make a nice, delightful little triangle. I'm gonna set this right on my foil-covered baking sheet. Make sure you use a baking sheet that has sides on it because like I said, it's going to get ooey and gooey and chances are the filling's gonna drip a little bit and you don't wanna get that on the bottom of your oven. So we're ready to put these in the oven. 200 or so degree oven, really just to heat them and get the fillings nice and soft. Easy enough, right? The last thing we need to do, just like a good RVer that you know I am, everything in our house does double duty. So not only is this my pasta strainer, my bean rinser, it's also my sugar sifter. So a little bit of powdered sugar right here. Well, there you have it, and these look absolutely delicious. You can find this easy recipe for sweet crepes for you and your sweetie, or your guests, as well as information about Hearst Castle and lots more about the surrounding San Simeon area on our website, and you know it, right? www.rvcookingshow.com. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. You know we love seeing you here, and we'll do it again next time from a completely different place on The RV Cooking Show.